Paradise Island in the Bahamas, home to one of the world's most prestigious poker tournaments, the PokerStars.net Caribbean Adventure. With a multi-million dollar prize pool and set against the sun-kissed glamour of the Atlantis Resort, this event attracts the most illustrious guest list of the poker calendar. In late 2011, over 400 entrants played the first ever Canada Cup of Poker online, competing for a share of the quarter of a million dollar prize pool. The nine who reached the final table were brought here to the 2012 PCA to fight it out live on the felt before crowning a national champion. The winner will receive $50,000 and entry to the PCA 25K High Roller with a shot at winning the first prize of over a million dollars. They'll also get to lift the inaugural Canada Cup trophy. It's 4.45 a.m. I'm about to head out to the Canada Cup in Bahamas. If you look around, Burr. that's it. I'm sleepy. See you in Bahamas. I wanted to hop Bahamas. So it's uh, the night before heading down to the Bahamas. We're leaving tomorrow morning. And I just got to figure out what t-shirts to bring. And I also have to make sure I leave enough space in my suitcase for the Canada Cup trophy to return back to Calgary. We made our way to Nassau. We'll see you at the PCA. It says our flight's already departed. Our nine players left cold Canada behind for an island named Paradise and the blazing Caribbean sun. Soon they'll be sat at the table in the resort's ballroom alongside the multi-million dollar PCA main event awaiting their fates. But first there was the small matter of a little socializing, rubbing elbows, getting to know the competition at the Canada Cup Welcome Drinks Party. And here they are meeting some of the biggest names in the Canadian poker world, Daniel Negreanu, world champion Jonathan Duhamel, and Greg Devora. Some are even hitting it off. Hey, I know you, talent shit, what's up? Bring it in, bring it in. What's up, woman? Mwah. After throwing back a couple of cold ones, the players head off to have some chow, steak and maple syrup. But some were interested in more than just socializing. One of our pro players admitted to having some ulterior motives. It'll be a dinner tonight with the players, so I, I'll get to meet a few of them there. Um, it'll really just, I'll have to make reads very quickly. Uh, since it's the first TV table for a lot of the players, they could either be playing a bit tight or a bit aggressive. Hopefully I'll, I'll catch them, I'll, I'll make an accurate read of what they're doing and try to adapt based on that. We'll see if that strategy pays off because the big day's finally arrived. It's time for the final table of the Canada Cup. Daniel Negreanu, Kid Poker. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Bahamas. A little tip here, everybody play good. Don't do anything stupid, okay? Dealer, shovel up and deal. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. James, have you noticed that everyone at this final table is from Canada? What are the odds of that? Who would have thought that the final table of the Canada Cup would be an all-Canadian affair? James, you know what a Canadian's favorite hand is, right? A, A. The average stack, 229,000. The chip leader has almost double that. Blinds are 5,000, 10,000 with a 1,000 ante. Let's get action started at this final table. The action has been folded around to Luc Lafontaine. Lafontaine, which is French for the Fontaine, starts things off with Big Slick, which is ironically what most Canadians call their driveways. 23,000, he's made it. Last around to Adrian Rosam. Talon check from Team Online. And she's got Queens. Here it comes. All in, which would put Lafontaine all in. It's a pretty big re-raise, but it's only for 23 bigs, and she's got him well covered. Possible she could be shoving worse, but I think most often they're going to be flipping. Got a call. Luke doesn't have the stack to fold. He does make the call, and we are off to the races. A race between Canadians usually involves a pair of ice skates. The Queen's 57% favorite, but not anymore. Lafontaine spikes an ace on the flop. Things are looking less than awesome for Rossum. She can catch running hearts. 
the turn is another ace. Well, hearts are no longer an option, but her queens are still live. Two outs for Talonchik. A nine on the river gives Lafontaine a full house, and we'll see him double up. Great start to this final table for Lafontaine. Unfortunately, Rousem has left triple, so maybe now would be a good time to get to know her a little better. My name is Adrienne Rousem from Edmonton, Alberta. I work as an occupational therapist, and also I'm a member of Team Online with PokerStars. I started to play poker uh, back in 2002. I made the transition to online, kind of looking around 2003, 2004, which is when I joined PokerStars. Um, and I've been playing recreationally up until July of last year when I signed on Team Online. Growing up, cards was always a really important, important part of any of our social gatherings. Uh, anytime we get together, we would play any sorts of card games. So it wasn't always poker. We played whist, we played bugger bridge, any sort of random flavors of games to decide that who had to wash the dishes. That, that was, the antis were always uh, non-financial, but it was always labor involved. Poker Stars has made my cat fat. <laughs> he gets to eat well. <laughs> poker started out for me really as something that was recreational and it gave me kind of pocket money or, or more, more money to be able to spend to buy the finer things in life or, you know, take vacations or, or you know, have time away from work. In my spare time, I love being outside. I mean, I love traveling, enjoying the sunshine, enjoying, uh, you know, some heat. Um, but in the winter time in Canada, I, I snowboard, I hit the mountains. I'm looking forward to playing this tournament. I'm really confident. I've done all the prep work I need to do. Um, kind of researched and got an idea of how everybody plays. But we'll see tomorrow, because, you know, how people play online isn't always how they play live. Adrian got her nickname because she used to drive an Eagle Talon. I see in her success, she's left her namesake behind for a beamer. You've changed, Talon Chick. You've changed. Blinds are up. We're now playing 6,000 at 12,000 with a 2K ante. And the action has been folded around to Kai Hu. James, you're the play-by-play. -play. You're supposed to know the answer to that. Who's in the hijack? Right, that's what I was asking. Who raises? Kai, other than being a sick two-liter word in Scrabble, said he'd be paying attention to how the others were playing and would try to capitalize. He's taking advantage of his position now. Well, Andrew Virgo has sevens in the small blind. He starts the hand with less than 100,000 and he moves all in. It's for fewer than 10 big blinds. Talon chick in the big. Contemplating. And deciding to fold. See two raises to 25,000. Who with the decision? He might be committed. I call. He does make the call. And we've got another coin flip. Andrew Virgo, a financial consultant from Ottawa, is ahead, but he is the player at risk. He needs those sevens to hold. The flop is ace-jack-10. Who takes the lead? The guy with the 8-10. Virgo now looking for a seven. A king on the river would be a chop. King. Any other card? He's the first player out of the final table. The river three, is a three. three so Andrew Virgo down. finishes in ninth place. In ninth position. Yes, nice nice call. We go. Andrew Virgo. <clears throat> Oh, it was a great experience. I, I came into the final table in ninth place, so it's it's definitely disappointing to get out first, but I, I had a great time and still got a few more days in the Bahamas, so it's uh, it's not too bad. Just make sure you don't take that four grand with you on the water slides. It takes forever to dry out that much cash. It's an eight-handed play underway. And that should fold it around to Travis Weigel, who claims to be from London. It's uh, London, Canada, James. Ah, he's limped from the hijack with King-10 suited. Well, that raise, Rousen might think she has the best hand. She's got fewer than four big blinds anyways. So she moves all in. Gets the button to fold. Looks like the blinds are out of the way as well. It's back on Weigel. How much more? 43,000 total. He makes the call and puts Talon Chick at risk. 
Like her beloved Oilers versus the Calgary Flames, Adrian is dominated. Still early. Oilers. People love their hockey. She needs to see an eight. It's a couple backdoor draws she can hit. Could double pair the board. Put a ten of spades. I'd rather the eight of hearts. Well, any eight, any spade. That's giving you a bit of We'll see Rousem double up. River's two of hearts. But it's the two of hearts on the river, so she finishes in eighth place. Congratulations, Andrea. 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 Jesus, stop calling me Andrea. $5,625. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Adding insult to injury. Get her name right. Anyways, good game, Angela. Her chips go across to Travis Weigel. I do have plans to play in a few more tournaments, starting with the Stud 8, Omaha 8 tournament tomorrow, which is more my style of play. I'm definitely more of a limit mixed games player. I plan to as well play the Poker Stars 8 game championship on Wednesday. 5,600 bucks ain't all she got. She got that kiss right there. I bet he comes in really handy on those icy cold Canadian nights. So we are already down to seven players at the final table of the 2012 Canada Cup. Blind still 6-12. And all in here from Benjamin LeBlond. 2009, he won the Canadian Poker Tour Heads Up Championship in Calgary. All in for 102,000. And it's Kai Hu considering making the call here with King Nine in the big blind. This would be a pretty loose call as King-9 could easily be dominated, but it's so tempting for fewer than eight big blinds. I call. He calls and we're off to the races one more time. Blonde is racing who? Indeed, and who has 44% equity with his King-9. The eight still in front. Ben LeBlanc, despite being at risk here, has defeated the likes of Phil Helmuth and Jeff Madsen at that heads-up tournament in Canada. There's a nine on the turn. Brutal turn card for LeBlanc, who oddly enough started playing poker during the hockey lockout in 2009. I swear I'm not making this up. And he doesn't hit an eight on the river. So he's our seventh place finisher. He'll receive just over $8,000 for that result. $8,125. Kai who takes another scalp and six players remain. The uh, stacks were pretty short. So, I mean, the hands sort of played themselves. I had the ace jack against pocket nines, and I lost that to bring me down to about seven big lines. And I wanted up losing my stack to Kai with uh, pocket eights to uh, king nine. Well, Kai who is now second on the leaderboard, playing a stack of 436,000. Jeet Shergill is still the chip leader. He has close to half a million. But the whole table is pretty short right now. The average stack is just 28 big blinds. James, might I say that Canadians are absolutely dominating this final table. Solid analysis. That's why we pay him the big bucks, people. Where's the 25? Action has been folded to David Labchuk. He's going to raise from the cutoff. He's got queens. And who is on the button with ace-king? Looks like we might be in for another race. Race. He's announced raise. 53,000. Makes it 53 total. Kai's putting a lot of thought into his moves. LaFontaine folds the small. Travis Weigel gives up the big. Back on Labchuk. Oh, race. And he announces raise. Well, eventually all the money's going in. A four bet to 135,000. I agree, James. I don't see how you can three bet fold ace king with these stacks. But who really does seem to enjoy being at the TV table? Three words. Get it in. Come on. Come on. He shoves. And there's the call from Labchuk and we're flipping those coins. I haven't seen this much Canadian flipping since the Montreal Olympics. Lab took the player at risk, but he's in front right now with Queens. Who looking for an ace or a king? It's a low flop. Good for Labchuk. 
Looking real good for two queens, which, by the way, I heard the queen is still sort of a big deal in Canada, right? I'm sure Canadians love being reminded they're part of the Commonwealth. Three of spades on the turn. Only an ace or a king eliminates David Labchuk. It's a 10. Okay. So he gets that double up, and who is left with just 33,000 chips? That was just pretty coolish. Two, yeah, I'm not going to anywhere with those now. You're Canadian, you live in the cooler. Yeah. Neither of us are going anywhere, right? Well, as David Labchuk stacks up his chips, let's find out some more about this guy. Thank you. My name is David Labchuk. I'm a chiropractor from uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I always wanted to be in healthcare. It also seemed like it was a physical job as well, so I wouldn't get bored just doing the thinking only. But at the same time, I didn't want to do just a physical where it would be boring on that side too. Ashley is here with me. She's the girl I'm dating right now. Been together for uh, four months or so. She's actually played in uh, casino tournaments before, so her whole family plays. So they uh, they think this is pretty fun. Like she's already. Uh, emailed back pictures of some of the uh, celebrities she's seen around here. So I think her dad is, uh, uh, he's gonna be just as thrilled as anybody else about it. Sports-wise, skiing, uh, indoor and beach volleyball. And uh, golf. Well, I've done all the research on everybody, so I know sort of what their games are. It's just at that stage now where you can't wait around too long. So once I get a hand, I'm going to have to go with it and just cross my fingers, hold my breath. I love how David mentioned the girl I'm dating right now. He's got the poker player thing down. Hold up to nine, sir, for your pocket. Now, if you're shoving like that, I probably would have just called. You know, I don't think I would have re-popped you. Well, Kai, who was crippled by David Labchuk, and now he's all in for 31,000 which is fewer than three big blinds. Shergill in the small blind with jack seven. Really not much more for him to call. You all in this 31, he all does call. call. Savish Pashad in the big blind will fold. So who is at risk, but he is ahead. Kai is ahead, but it might as well be a flip. Shogil with two live cards, and they are suited. The flop has a jack on it. Shogil takes the lead. Who now looking for a king? The eliminations at this final table have been fast and furious. We're about to see another. It needs to be the king of diamonds or the king of hearts. Or Kaihu will finish in sixth place. He's gone, the flush for Shergill. Kaihu will collect just over ten and a half thousand dollars for finishing in sixth. Not bad, a five-figure score and a trip to the Bahamas. Yep, Kaihu. Kaihu, ten thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars. How I got here, I bought in directly. Uh, it was just a great event, I couldn't pass up. You know, a trip to the Bahamas for the final nine, and you know, basically a chance to, I guess, play Canadians, which is always nice. You know, it's always nice to keep have a somewhat local event for uh, since online is is worldwide um, aside from that you know I'm just happy to be here uh, wish the cards could have went my way a bit better but I'm really happy with how I played so that's uh, the main thing I think I'm going to ask both a question and make a statement when I say who finished in sixth place five-handed action at the final table with the blinds up to eight and sixteen thousand It's been an under-the-gun raise from Luke Lafontaine. He's got sevens. And Savage Pashad has shoved with sixes from the small blind. You cannot fold this. Go call. He does make the call. And Pashad is at risk and four to one underdog with five cards to come. Sure is seven of speed. Fontaine getting a little bit greedy. Only has to dodge a six. Seven's holding so far. Bashad with two outs. Just an 8% chance of survival. And Prashad's two outs are now reduced to one. 
only a 2% chance of survival. And just like that, we have four players at this final table. Salvesh Pashad collects $13,750 for finishing fifth. So here we are, the final four. Jeet Shergill will be first to act here. Ilmuk. 35. David Labchuk getting a little bit frisky, raising on the button with 10 six of clubs. Yeah, a little loosey-goosey with that big stack. Weigel's got him dominated. It looks like he's defending his big blind, so we're going to see a flop without anyone being all in. And that flop is 5-8-10 with two diamonds. Both players with top pair. Weigel's kick are good. Very bad flop for Labchuk. He's likely to think he has the best hand. Weigel checks to him. Labchuk continues for 35,000. Weigel makes the call. Playing a little pot control, maybe hoping Labchuk will fire again on the turn. Ace of hearts on the turn. Weigel checks a second time. Labchuk does not slow down, he bets again, 80,000. Weigel probably doesn't like that ace, but he probably shouldn't be folding this very often either. Cool. He announces call. 316,000 in the middle now. The king of spades giving two pair to Weigel. Weigel's got kings up and it looks like now he's gonna donk out. I think Weigel has a much better shot at letting Labchuk bet here than he does of Labchuk calling. Insta-fold from Labchuk. Looks like on the turn he was afraid Labchuk had an ace. Then he was hoping Labchuk had an ace. Weigel adding 164,000 to his stack. And we play on. Labchuk under the gun. 40. Raises to 40,000. Comes right out swinging again, this time with a hand that's fairly likely to be the best one four-handed. Cheat Shergill will call out of the big blind. Shergill's got a decent hand, but he is out of position, a Labchuk. These are the two biggest stacks at the final table. Shergill with the slight chip advantage. It's a queen, nine, king flop. Shergill, the second pair. He's also got a gut shot draw. 65. Checks to the razor, and Labchuk continues for 65,000. Shergill not going anywhere. Raise. He's announced raise. It's a check raise to 205,000, and Labchuk immediately gets out of the way. Nice semi bluff slash raise for value. I think I'd like to know more about this father slash poker player. My name is Jeet Shergill. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, and I'm a land developer. I actually, about six years ago, I started thinking about that I should be retiring soon and uh, I gotta find something to do it for my, with my time. So I figured poker would be the thing that'll interest me. And so my son taught me poker. Some of his friends were playing online and I figured my best practice would be to play online. My wife, my son, all my other three kids also can play poker. My brother plays poker, his kids play poker, but none of them regular. We get about two tables going in our house alone when we get the whole family together. Nobody gives anybody a break. My older daughter, Kiran, she acts and has acted in a lot of Bollywood movies. Now she crit critiques them on a TV program out of New York. Jeet's daughter critiques Bollywood actors on a TV program. I think she'd make a cute couple with someone who critiques poker players on a TV program. Huh? Marry me. Blinds up to 10 and 20,000 with a 3,000 ante. Shergill's going to be first to speak. Ace Deuce under the gun. All in. And he's shoving for 191,000. And he's been called by Travis Weigel, who has exactly the same hand, although it's suited. Fairly good shot this ends in a chop. Nah, a whole lot of clubs. Shergill 
not satisfied with the chop. He wants clubs. Well, that's what happens when you ask for clubs, you get spades. Weigel flops huge. A straight flush draw. Steel wheel. No chance Shorgo wins this hand outright. He's drawing to a chop. And now he's drawing dead. The nut flush for Weigel, the elimination of former chip leader Jeet Shergill. You weren't covered. I wasn't covered? Oh, hang on a second. Yeah, there's 25. So got a chip left. 30. You got 31. You got that left. He still has chips. Always excitement at the PCA. We have not crowned our uh, fourth place finisher yet. He's in the game. Chip in a chair. Chip in a chair. 7,000. Chip in a chair. There might be something to that. I could really see that phrase catching on. Oh, no I'm not going to touch my cards. Nothing like being forced all in in the big blind. I'm not going to muck them. Well, Labchuk has limped under the gun. Very sneaky. Weigel, the jack three will call as well. Look at that. Shurgill's actually got decent equity here with tens. But it's an ace-high flop, plus the backdoor flush draw for Labchuk. Labchuk running very hot today. Picks up the flush draw on the turn, checks it again. Weigel drawing dead. Shurgill's got one out in the deck. And Labchuk rivers the nut flush. Check, check. And checks it? James, you can never be too careful. There is a straight flush out there. Ace king for David. Oh, Labchuk's going to win both pots. David's going to win the side And Jeet Shergill will be eliminated. And he's going to be steaming when he sees what a good hand got cracked. Consolation noises all round. As Jeet Shergill exits with fourth place prize money of $19,500. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> My strategy was not to go in with, uh, you know, draws or other things, go with solid hands and play them solid and uh, let the other players, uh, you know, adjust the table, the pace of the table. And uh, they started going all in very early and uh, I was going to be foolish. I was going to wait until I hands and I did. I did play hands when I had hands. So we're down to three at the final table of the Canada Cup. Luke Lafontaine and David Labchuk both have playable stacks, but Travis Wiggle is short with just 16 big blinds. Those blinds still 10-20 with a 3K ante. Weigel first to speak. He's gonna raise his button with deuces. Surprise he's not open shoving here, Labchuk Makes the call out of the small blind with ace five. Blue calls. And Lafontaine calling out of the big blind with sixes. I'm surprised to not see one re-raise out of these guys three-handed. Luke's a retired car salesman, so I'd assume he's used to bluffing. David checks. Queen, four, king, flop. Luke checks. Check around. Gets checked around. Luke's got the best hand. While well, that ace sees Labchuk take the lead. David checks. Luke checks. Looks like Weigel's going to take a stab at this. I call. David calls. Labchuk calls. Lafontaine gets out of the way. Three on the river. David checks. Labchuk Luke checks, checks for a third David time. It gets checked five, down. And a pair of aces will win this pot. I think Labchuk may have missed a little bit of value there on the end. But it doesn't matter. He won the pot and now has the chip lead. These are Luke's cards. Meanwhile, I think Weigel may be wondering if a bet on the flop would have won him that pot. Well, that was the last hand of the level. Blinds are going up again. We're now playing 12 and 24,000. Labchuk in the small, Lafontaine in the big, Weigel on the button. He looks down at King Queen and now he's shoving. Gets called immediately by Labchuk with jacks. Everyone calls. Weigel's on the brink of elimination. He's a slight dog to two jacks, and he is covered. David has pocket jacks. I think you're going to hit. 
The flop is king, queen, 10. Two pair for Weigel, but Labchuk with a straight draw. Sick flop. Jack of clubs would be filthy. David is on a straight draw. 10 outs. Jack of clubs. Six of clubs. And that club reduces Labchuk's outs by 30%. An ace, a jack, or a nine and nine on the river. That's pretty gross. The offsuit nine. Wave goodbye, Gold, to Travis Weigel. Third place, just over twenty-five and a half thousand dollars. Got pretty short sacked after a couple bad beats, and then ran uh, my king queen into Puck Jacks, and I flopped top two pair, but he ended up catching a straight on the end, so it was kind of a bad beat again. But overall. And so we are heads up at the final table of the Canada Cup. One of these two players will lift the trophy and be $50,000 richer. Will it be David Labchuk, the chiropractor from Calgary, or Luke Lafontaine, the motor salesman from Montreal? I wish there were some way we could learn more about Luke Lafontaine. Doodly -doo, doodly -doo, doodly -doo. I am Luke Lafontaine and I'm living about uh, an hour's up north of Montreal, so that's me in Quebec. And to live, I, I used to uh, sell cars, buy and sell cars. I got a small uh, retail lot. I used to sell 4x4 SUV. Most of my business is SUV and 4x4 pickups and a couple sport cars in the summertime. I got uh, two children. I got a daughter, Audrey, and I got a son, Tamijo. But Tommy Jew's not with me here in the Bahamas. He's staying in Montreal with his mom. And I got my girlfriend's ears. She come with me and with her son, too. I meet my girlfriend at a special events in Montreal at a boxing show at the Santa Bell. So I meet her there. We're close at the table, one or the other, and we look at each other. And after that, we we'll start to talk there, and then we went for a drink. And that's how we met and gave the phone number. And after that, we go for supper. And it's about a year and a half now I'm with her. A lot of my friends, they used to play a cash game on the net. So they introduced me to Poker Star. And since that day, I play mostly on internet. Sounds like Luke could really use the win here since he's got about a dozen people he's got to take out to dinner after this. Hope the prize money covers it. I recommend ordering off the kids' menu for a better deal. So Lafontaine in the big blind, Labchuk in the small blind with the button. He acts first pre-flop. And he's raising with king six. Call. Call. And Lafontaine will defend his big blind with jack nine suited. Jack nine suited is a hand with a lot of possibilities, or as they would say in Montreal, Jacques Neuf est un coup de main avec beaucoup de possibilités. 65. Well, he's flop trips. See? He checks to the razor. Labchuk continues for 65,000. Lafontaine calls. Gotta wonder if after that call, Labchuk's gonna shut it down now. A 10 on the turn. Lafontaine checks a second time. Labchuk checks behind. Do you have a jack? Hey? Do you have a jack? I wish I had one. Well, that's a straightforward way of doing it. Most people just bet for information. Check. King on the river. 50. And Labchuk 50, now thinks he's got there. Probably thinks this is a value bet. It's a terrible river card for him making top pair. Lafontaine doing his best job of looking pained while still raising. Look at his hand go. He can't wait to get those chips in. Two he check raises to 195,000. Half the raise for value in that spot. I think this is a pretty confident looking raise. Tough to lay this hand down, but it seems fairly off that Luke has a jack. Labchuk calls. He kind of gave you that answer on the flop, David. <laughs> Labchuk doing his best to not look like he just got hit by a bus. Meanwhile, Luke is looking pretty pleased with himself. He really got him good with that. I wish I had a jack line. A good start for Luke, but over the next few hands, David reclaimed the chip advantage. Blinds are up to 15 and 30,000 with a 4,000 ante. 60. Raise to 60,000. Labchuk raising on the button from the small blind. 
Makes it 60,000 with King-9. Ace-Jack for Lafontaine. I would have expected a three bet there. He just calls. Tricky. The flop is King-Jack-7 with two diamonds. Both make a pair. Lafontaine checks. 75. Lab check continues for 75,000. A shove from Lafontaine. The call from Labchuk. This could be it. Lafontaine at risk. He will need an ace, a jack, or running diamonds, or the Canada Cup is over, and the trophy will be lifted by David Labchuk. He's a 75% favorite with two cards to come. The turn takes away the diamond draw. Lafontaine needs an ace or a jack to survive. Ace of speed. End the room. Do we have a champion here in the Bahamas? We do, and it's David Labchuk who wins the 2012 Canada Cup. David Labchuk walks with $50,000, but if you ask me, the real prize is the fond memories they created and being able to get out of Canada for a few days in the middle of winter. I'd never go back. Labchuk the champion. The runners-up prize of $35,500 goes to Luke Lafontaine. I wasn't, uh, Thank you. I wasn't super happy about that. But huge congratulations to David Labchuk. So winning the Canada Cup is, uh, will definitely be one of the highlights of my poker career. Uh, even if I go on to do uh, better things later, this will still be, I'll always remember this one. Because uh, it's just one of the cooler events that I've ever been in. So David lifts the Canada Cup, but his journey isn't over. Part of his prize is entry to the 25K high roller which has the first prize of a million dollars. PokerStars generously threw in a uh, 25K uh, seat, and so that was, that was just as important to me as the, uh, the, uh, the large prize that uh, they gave out as well. I'm really excited about playing with all these big names because I'm a fairly casual player, so you see them, you see them on television, and uh, it's unbelievable that I'll actually be sitting beside a few of these guys playing hands with them. So, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to react, tell you the truth. I don't know if I'm going to be intimidated by them. Uh, I, I don't know. Or am I going to look at them just as uh, another guy with two cards in front of them? Well, we're about halfway through the day, and things are looking pretty good. He's doubled up a few times. Uh, seems like he's having a lot of fun in the Bahamas. There's a couple hard components there, but I think he's kind of got their number now. About the eighth level or so, uh, I was slow playing aces. The guy I was playing against, he uh, flopped two pair. He bet, I re-raised, he went all in, and I called. And so obviously the aces didn't hold up. That took about uh, half of my chips. I was down to about 45,000. So at the end, I got really desperate. Uh, so I was shoving with just about anything. Uh, got an ace six. One person min raised, Jennifer Harmon uh, called. I thought, wow, this is a good chance I have a six, so maybe I can uh, pull a little tiny squeeze play. I was trying, I was actually just trying to think of something desperate to do at that point, and uh, uh, she knocked me out with pocket tens. So David Labchuk's Caribbean adventure ended there, but he's still the Canadian champion, at least until next January, when we hope to see you again for the next edition of the Canada Cup. And don't forget to check out PokerStars.net, the world's largest play money site with more tournaments and qualifiers every day than anywhere else. From Joe Stapleton and me, James Hartigan, it's goodbye from the Bahamas.